All right, welcome back to Free Tip Friday, guys. Going to be cutting off our decking here. A lot of guys were asking me, how do I do it without cutting through the uh, tar membrane that I've put over my double trimmer here? All right, because there's no point in putting a membrane over to, to seal the top of your wood if you're just going to cut through it when you trim your decking off. So pretty simple process. This is where my decking is going to get cut. So I'm simply going to mark an inch, half an inch away from that line. Actually, three eighths of an inch about. And I'm going to set my saw to about 35 degrees. It'll just be able to get through inch and a half material I think at around 35 degrees. Drop my depths guy down. Okay, so set my track to my guides. Three eighths of an inch away. quite getting through so I might have to go a little shallower my degrees there take it to about 30 degrees let's move your track down That's how you don't cut through your memory. Okay, so you can see that I got my little bevel here now. I got a nice almost half inch gap for water that's going to get down in this joint to, to be able to drain out air to get in there, dry it all out. Now I'm just going to come back with my track saw, set it right to my line, and just square cut these, but I'm not going to run my saw very deep, just enough to get onto that bevel there and once the board's up in there you won't ever be able to see that it's beveled it'll look like it's square cut but actually it's beveled There you have it. Cuts are all square. And before I install my trim board, I'm going to take my little uh, laminate trim router, put a 1 8 round over on it, just hit these ends so I don't have that sharp, sharp edge of these. It'll have a nice little 1 8 radius like the sides do. Makes it look even that much more professional. Get all that sawdust out of there before you put the trim down. Here's my little lamy trimmer with the 1 8 round over. Instead of running it this way, um, I ran it sideways because the deck boards are never going to be perfect on every one. And so if you run it on top, your router keeps going up and down and you don't get an even finish. So that's why I run it on its side like that. So the bearing can follow. And you get a nice even round over on the end. Then drop in your trim board. And I would say that it's about as sexy as it gets. Okay. 
All right, so now that we got our trim board on there, it's gonna, definitely going to add a bit of charm. Name that movie, my Aussie friends. Adds a bit of charm. Uh, we're going to have to do something with this corner here. Now, a lot of people would say, okay, we'll just miter that corner, turn the corner. That'll look great, right? You're right. It will look great. But the problem is this decking is still pretty wet put my moisture meter on this decking and some of these boards are still up in the 20s percent moisture range so that means that these boards are going to shrink and if any of you have done in any miters in green wood you know that when you make that miter just perfect with green wood even if you glue and screw that thing together a gap is going to form right in the heel of the miter All right because when you put two boards together with an angle cut on them, with a 45 degree cut, the boards are gonna shrink widthwise, right? You can see how when the boards shrink together from both sides, my thumbs pull apart here, meaning that the bottom part of that miter is gonna open up as the wood shrinks away from the joint, right? The boards are gonna shrink. That's gonna open up and the toe always stays tight, right? Because the toe is shrinking in towards itself and the heel is shrinking in away from itself. So you get a nasty gap there and depending on how much your wood shrinks you can get gaps up to like an eighth or a quarter of an inch that were perfect when you installed them but due to shrinkage they got screwed over. Now a way to combat this would be to cut a half lap miter. So you cut 45 degrees half the depth of the wood and then you leave a square lap on the bottom side and then you notch out the other miter so that it sits over top of that lap and they're kind of glued together. I've done that before and that works, but even then the wood still pulls away from itself, even with all that glue trying to hold the fibers together. The wood always wins. So I'm going to come up with a different solution, a little samurai solution, I will call it. So my solution is to do something completely different that once again will change the course of history in building. I'm going to do a half lap with an extra little bit hanging off the end. So this piece is going to come over and half lap over with a little knob about an inch and I'll leave this one out an inch as well so that they'll kind of stick out with little samurai ends hanging off there. I think it's going to actually look really cool once I set my posts. My posts will actually probably be set back from the corner and then I'm going to do floating rails for the corner or even if I was to set my post right on the corner it would still look really neat with the reveal so let's see how this looks Now, if you noticed, I uh, killed the wood real good with my hammer, compressed those fibers so they fit nicely. Then just tap it in. Just tap it in. Probably. Oh, parkour. Close, a couple of claps, pull her down. Once that glue sets up, she will be going nowhere forever.
All right, guys, well, that wraps up this free tip Friday. If you like the look of this corner detail, hey, please like the video and share with the world. We all gotta do what we can to help keep the craft alive, guys. I'm also gonna incorporate this little lap detail onto the front of each stair tread in the corners. So the stairs and the deck are really gonna tie together well and the design's gonna stand out and kind of grab your eye from a distance. So I'm really excited to get these stairs finished and, and basically just get this entire barn finished. I'm really excited about that. It's taking forever. I'd love to hear what you guys think about this. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Uh, tools that I used in this video, this one is probably an uncommon tool. It's a little Japanese ink line. It's like a chalk line, but instead of chalk, it uses ink and a really fine string. So it snaps a really fine line for doing precise type work. It's available on my Amazon store. And considering it's Friday, it's time for me to go have a beer. Speaking about cracking beers, let's do another hangout here in Victoria, guys. For all my brothers here in Victoria, so we will be doing beers with the brothers. Friday, April the 14th, 9 p.m. at the Crooked Goose. If you guys want to join, love to see you there. Until then, summer out.